In this video, I'm going to show you how to align mouse brain sections to the Allen Brain Atlas by using the ABBA workflow. My name is Nicolas. I work at the bioimaging and optics platform at EPFL, and I am the developer of ABBA. This video walks you through what you need to do so you can install ABBA, perform the alignment of the sections, and finally import the registration results into the Cupa software. Let's get started. Installing ABBA means installing three different software, Fiji, QPass, and Elastic. You also need to download the Atlas dataset and some plugins for QPass and Fiji. Installing all these components manually can be tedious, and that's why I've made an installer script which automates all of this for you. Since there are some specificities, depending on the operating system you are using, I won't detail all of it in this video. But if you follow the link go.tpfl um, ABBA install, which is also given in the video description, you will find the most up-to-date installation instructions for your OS. If you have some issues during the installation of ABBA, do not hesitate to post it on the forum image.sc where I'm actively providing some support on ABBA. Let's start by a few words about the dataset I'll be using for the video. First of all, you can download it from Denodo and the link is written in the video description. The dataset consists of 97 sections from a single animal. They were put into seven slides, which were imaged with a slide scanner. Each section is about 20k times 20k pixels and has three channels. Its uncompressed size is about 100 gigabytes. Each section has three fluorescent channels. The first channel is a DAPI channel, a stain for nuclei. The second channel is autofluorescent. And the third channel consists of spares cells expressing a fluorescent marker. These are the cells of interest that I will locate in 3D within the atlas by the end of the video. Here's the dataset once unzipped. It consists of seven VSI slides. Each slide has a file with a VSI extension and its associated folder flanked with underscores. The first step of the ABBA workflow is to define the dataset. And for this, I use QPass to create a project which will contain all the sections, meaning all the VSI files. I start QPass. And I create an empty folder that I will name Tuto ABBA. I drag this empty folder into QPass and this initializes the QPass project. I can now add any QPass compatible image within this project. So I select all VSI files and drag and drop them into QPass. Be careful in this step. Most probably, you want to keep the order of the files right, as I have here. On Windows, this can be done by selecting the first file when drag and dropping a list of files. However, if I select, for instance, the slide 3 and I drag and drop them, then you see that the order is somewhat random. Now let's concentrate on this QPass import window. You need to pay attention to two things before clicking import. First, make sure that Bioformats Builder is selected in the Image Provider field. Second, make sure that the Auto Generate Pyramids checkbox is unchecked, like it is here. I am now done with the dataset definition. I can minimize QPass and move on with the following part of the workflow. 
let's start Fiji. I type ABBA in the search bar, find ABBA start, and click run. The demo dataset consists of mouse coronal sections, so I choose this atlas. Sections are coronal, so I click coronal in slicing mode and click OK. You can now see ABBA's interface. Currently, I did not load any section, so the only displayed data is the atlas. ABBA uses a viewer named Big Data Viewer. Here's how I navigate within it. I click and hold the right click button for panning, and I use the mouse wheel to zoom in or out. On the right part of ABBA's interface, there is a panel which contains several cards. Let me expand it. The Atlas Display card contains some Atlas Display options. There are three channels in this Atlas. The Nisil Stain, channel 0, the Autofluorescence channel, channel 1, and the channel with the limits of the different Atlas regions, or channel 2. I can show or hide each channel independently with a checkbox. I can also control the brightness of each channel with a slider below. For a start, I choose to display the Nisil channel only and I make it pretty bright. Another display option I'd like to mention already is the displayed slicing, which can be controlled by this slider here. Currently, it is at the maximum value of 50 steps. Since the resolution of the atlas is of 10 micrometer, you can find this value here, there are 50 times 10 micrometers between each displayed slice. Many more slices can be displayed if I decrease the spacing. For instance here, I have only 250 micrometers between two consecutive slices. This will be useful later on, but at the start of the registration, it will be easier to display the largest spacing, so I move back to 50 steps or 500 micrometers. Now it's time to import the QPass project, for that, I simply go to Import, Import QPath Project. I can select the project file in a file browser, or I can simply drag and drop the project file into this field here. The two other fields are the initial position along the atlas for the first section, and the spacing increment in millimeter between each section. These values are rough initial estimates, they will be changed uh, throughout the registration process. However, do not start at zero for the axis increment because the sections are not spread out and it's harder to select a subset of them. I click OK. There are advanced opening options, but you can safely ignore them and keep the default parameters. When the little icon at the bottom right has stopped turning, this means that the project has been fully opened, the sections are not displayed yet, we will check that later. Let me briefly describe the interface before moving on. On the left panel, there is the Big Data Viewer or BDV view of my data. This is a graphical view where I'll be able to see the sections overlaid over or displayed below the atlas. The right panel contains several cards. We've already seen the Atlas Display card. Below, there is a card named Slices Display, which contains a tabular view over the sections. The table is always sorted along the Atlas directions, and each row corresponds to a section under of the BDV view as shown here. Note that there is a particular section the current one with an extra ring. Okay, back to the software. 
the first thing I will do is to properly display the sections. As you can see, thanks to the table view icons, all sections are currently invisible. I can make the first section visible by clicking on the eye icon. I still do not see anything because all channels are hidden. I click on the icon to display the first channel and it doesn't look like a section. It is actually the label of the first slide. The second section is the overview of the whole slide. The third one is finally a section of interest. I do not want to register labels and overviews, so let me clean them. To make this easy, I minimize a few cards, expand the right panel, and extend the column with the names of the imported sections. It's now easy to spot which sections I should remove. I select all of them using Ctrl plus left click. When they are all selected, I right click and I remove the selected slices. This part now done, I will unhide all sections. I could either click on the little icons for each section individually, but that's tedious. Instead, I select all slices with Ctrl A, maybe it's Command A with the Mac, and I click on the header of the table for the properties that I want to change. So now all slices are visible for the first channel. I can also change the color as well as the brightness of the selected sections by clicking on the header at this location. I can choose the color and I prefer cyan because blue is really hard to see. And I will lower the max value to 120 in order to make them really bright. It's time to zoom out and check how the sections match with the atlas above. It's not very easy to check that at the moment because the sections are overlapping one another. I minimize the slice display card and look at this card named display and navigation. In it, there is a change overlap mode button. I can click it to toggle between three modes. This particular mode avoids overlap of sections. So I keep this one. And if I want some control over the packing of the sections, I can play with these sliders below. Let's zoom in a bit more. I can see that the sections are too bright. Let me fix that. But this time, instead of selecting sections from the table view, I will select them from the BDV view. If I press and hold the left click button, I can draw a rectangle. And if the rectangle covers a slice handle, the corresponding section will be selected. If I press Shift when doing the rectangle, I can add slices to the current selection. I'm now pressing Shift and I'm adding these slices. If I press Ctrl, I can remove them from the current selection. If I look at the table view, you will see that it is updated with the selection as well. Let me click on the table header, the channel zero display option here. And I will type 800 for the max value.
this seems reasonable, so let me apply this setting for all sections. I can also press Ctrl A to select all sections from the BDV view. I can see that the sections are not matching the atlas. They are clearly not at the right anterior posterior position. How to fix that? Well, I need to translate the sections along the AP axis. The way to do that is by selecting the green rectangles here and dragging them right or left. Note that the translation is only applied on the selected sections. So if I want to translate all of them, I need to be careful and select all of them before. If I forgot to select them, I risk to insert sections in between others. Note that this can be useful if you need to reorder sections if they were not in the correct order at first. A small trick I'd like to show is that you can even reverse the order of some sections. For that, I need to lock the location of a single section by selecting it and right clicking and click set as key slice. As long as I do not drag this section, it will be locked at its current location. This being done, this being done, I can select a range of slices. And given that the key slice is locked, I can reverse the other section by grabbing one and simply going the other way around. I can finally translate all these slices by dragging the key slice. I know in this dataset the order was correct, so to cancel the mess I just made, I can press Ctrl Z to undo the last actions. And I'm back to the initial order. Canceling, undoing is also accessible in Edit, undo. Let's start the registration. What I will do now is look for a few sections, usually three, that I will adjust to match the atlas well. I will choose them spread along the AP axis, one at the beginning, one in the middle, and one at the end. I will lock them at their position, and this will define three key sections. So I zoom in and look for the hippocampus and in particular the region where the hippocampus is appearing. Let me select all the sections and drag them. Okay, and now you see that this section is somewhere in the middle between this one and this one. Currently, I display one section every 500 micrometers, and it's now time to display more sections in order to be more precise. This section is really at the location where the hippocampus starts to show up. So I would displace a bit the sections below. Then I select it and I set it as a key slice. So this defines my first key slice. And now I will look at the posterior region. And here, just before I do this, you notice that if I select all slices and I move the sections on the right part, then this change won't affect the slices located before the key slice. I zoom in to get a more precise view of the location. And now I will try to concentrate on finding a key slice matching the disappearing hippocampus here.
and we see that this is a correct match except for the fact that I can see some asymmetry between the left and right part of this section contrary to the atlas and this means that the cutting was not exactly symmetrical. To account for this problem there is a card named atlas slicing which allows you to change the cutting angle of the atlas. If I change the Y rotation, I can compensate for the left-right asymmetry. Changing the X rotation can also be used to compensate for a cutting angle not exactly perpendicular, but it is a bit more difficult to find the right angle, so this won't be covered in the video. So I select the slice and set it as a key slice. Now I'll do one last key slice. I increasing the displayed slicing so that it's easier to go at the anterior part. There are these very bright features that I will try to match. This section is matching pretty well, so I'm selecting it and setting it as a key slice. You may have noticed, if I zoom out, that there are some gaps between sections and this is due to the fact that we removed the labels and overviews at the beginning of the video. We don't want to keep these gaps because there is no particular reason to have a gap here. So what I will do is select all the slices with Ctrl A and I will click Distribute Spacing. What this will do is to distribute the spacing of all the slices but the key slice location will not be modified. Now that I've done all this work, it would be a good idea to save my work. Let's go to File, Save State. I call this state, state 0, and save it. With this state file, in case the computer crashes or the software crashes, I can restart again the registration task where I was, or I can even decide to pause and close the software, and just resume the registration to the point where I was. So I will go to File, Load, select State 0, and I can continue to work on the registration. So before moving on, let me introduce the two view modes that are present in ABBA. The first one is the current mode called positioning mode. In this mode, all sections are visible. All atlas sections are visible with a tunable spacing. 
and it's a convenient mode for the initial sections reordering or rotating or flipping them. It's also the best mode to position the sections along the Z axis, just like we did. You can also use it to tune the cutting angle by using the X and Y rotation sliders. The second mode is the review mode that will be needed in the last steps of the registration. In this mode, only the current section is visible and the corresponding atlas section is overlaid onto it. It's a mode which is convenient for reviewing the section's position along the z-axis as well as checking the quality of the in-plane registration. To go into the review mode, I will look at the card named Display and Navigation. And I click Review. I zoom in. Now, by using the right arrow key and left arrow key, I can modify the current section and move from one section to the next one. Like that, I can review all the slices along the atlas. And if necessary, I can go back to the positioning mode, add more key slice, fine tune a little bit better the cutting angle, and so on. At the moment, I will decide that the sections are positioned correctly enough, so I will move on. And I will start by adjusting a little bit the size of the section in Y. It seems that all sections are a little bit stretched and compressed in the Y direction. To correct for this, there is a command which is convenient, which is called Align Interactive Transform. If I want this transform to be applied to a section, it needs to be selected. Here I assume that all sections are compressed in Y, which is usually the case when performing the preparation of the sample. So I select all of them using Ctrl A, and now I do Align, Interactive Transform, and I can scale in X, in Y, I can even translate in X or translate in Y all the sections which are selected. It's also possible to rotate. Let me restore the initial settings and I will simply apply a stretch of about 20% and also a small translation in Y. This looks correct. To apply the transformation, I simply need to close this window. Now if I browse through the section by using the arrow key, indeed it looks like this was a needed transformation. Maybe the translation is why it was not really needed. So I will correct this and do Align, Interactive Transform, and put the translation back to its original value and click the window. This looks rather satisfactory for a first initial state, so let me save the state again. I'll call it state1. 
It's now time to start an automated registration. I will start with an affine transformation. For that, first I make sure to select all slices and I click align, elastics registration, affine. I will need to choose the atlas channel that will be used for the registration and the channel zero is the initial channel so I'm selecting this one. And for the sections, the DAPI channel is also the channel zero. So exactly like the ones which are displayed below. Registration resampling is a parameter that will define how the image is resampled. So what is the pixel size of the image that will be used for the registration? For an affine transform, this value 40 micrometer is about four times the resolution of the atlas and it's of sufficient quality for an affine registration. So I click OK and what you see right now is that there are little red icons. These icons represent the fact that there is a registration which is started but which is not being processed currently. If I look to the left, then I can browse all the little section icons and I can see some green ones, which corresponds to registration jobs, which have started and which are now finished. And the yellow ones corresponds to the current processed registration jobs. Depending on the number of cores, that you have on your computer, you will have up to 16 or 30 jobs in parallel, or if you have a low number of cores, it can go down to two, three or four. I will now wait until all the registration jobs are done and speed up the video for this part. This should take around four to five minutes on my computer. I will save the state. State 2. And using the arrow keys, I will review how the registration has performed. And it seems to have done a pretty good job already. Now I can add a registration onto the first one. And in particular, I can do a spline registration, which means that I can deform the section in a more complex manner than simply an affine transformation. For that, I will simply select only the current slice in order to have the result fast. And if the result is satisfactory, I will apply the transformation onto other sections. So let me do align, elastics, registration, spline. Here I will keep the same channels as previously, initial channel for the atlas, DAP stain for the sections. And I need to choose another parameter, which is somehow the, it's the number of columns that will be used for the grid that will be deformed uh, when it is applied on the section. So the more points you put, then the more degrees of freedom uh, you can deform the slice, but it's also a bit heavier in terms of computation. That's why the recommended number of points here is between five to have a crude spline up to 20. And here I will choose 15. And because I want to have a bit more details than uh, I want to use, I need to use uh, more details for the spline transformation than when I'm performing an affine transformation. I put the registration resampling uh, to a 
lower value than before. So before we had 40 micrometers, and now I will do um, resampling at 20 micrometers. So let's click OK. The registration is being processed, the button is yellow. Now the registration is done, we see the result, and we can even browse the quality or the improvement of this spline registration compared to the other one by clicking in the display and navigation card this view previous and view next registration. So basically we are disabling in the display uh, the last registration. So if I click view previous then I can see how the slide was registered before the first registration. I can even click another one. So this was before the first affine registration, with the first affine registration, with the spline registration. And you can see that we get a um, pretty good improvement from this to this. Since this looks pretty good, what I can do is I can select all the other sections and remove this one from the selection because it has already been registered and now I can run the same registration procedure for all slices by doing align elastic registration spline I keep the same parameters I click OK and I will speed up the video until all tasks are done all the registration jobs are done I will save the state state 3 and I can browse through the sections to see if this was doing a good job and here it looks quite good okay so Sometimes you don't get um, very nice results from the start. There are different things that you can test. First of all, in the spline registration, you have different parameters. So you may try with a um, finer, with a more coarse spline transformation, so with fewer points, or you can go up to 20 after it starts to be uh, uh, quite heavy in terms of computational demand. So you shouldn't go way too high above 20. Also, the registration resampling will have a, an effect. And finally, here I choose to register based on the nuclei features because they are really um, well stained and there is plenty of features. However, it's also possible to try to register on different channels. So you may want to have a look, for instance, at the autofluorescence, the ARA channel in the atlas, and, and for instance here the autofluorescence channel. So trying to use different modalities for the, regist for the registration may be useful. So try a few things. I will stop the registration here, but it's also possible to add another spline transformation on top of this. So you can add many spline transformation. It's just that at some point uh, you need to ask yourself whether you are not deforming too much the slice to make it match. And this only uh, a lot of experience in the domain will prevent you from uh, doing mistakes. Now that the registration is done, I can export the results to the QPath project. And for that, I simply need to select all slices again and click export, export registration to QPath project. I click OK, and it will take again a bit of time to process the export. So I will speed up the video. All the export jobs are done. 
I can now go back to QPath where the project is still opened and I can pick any section This one, for instance. This image is a fluorescent image. And I simply need to click Extensions, ABBA, Load Atlas Annotation into Open Image. I can choose to split between the left and right regions or not. So here I will split them. And I can choose the naming property of the atlas. Usually that will be acronym and click OK. If I don't want to have all the atlas region names everywhere, I can press, can press the letter N. This action was recorded into a workflow. So if I want to import for all the sections of all the atlas, I can create a script And I can run this script for the whole project. I can just get rid of labels and overview by putting the filter on the character. So here it's only the sections which have 10x written. There are 97 sections. And I can click OK. And the batch process is running. So now all the sections which have overlaid the Allen Brain Atlas regions. Okay, the import is done for all sections. So if I click any other slide, then I have the Atlas regions which are displayed on top. If I need to correct some imperfection in the registration like here, the best way to do it is to go back on the ABBA workflow, so in the, the PG part of the workflow. And here, for instance, if I want to correct slide 4, the slide number 10, I will browse in order to find this section, so which is this one here. And I can manually edit the result of the previous spline registration. For that, I simply need to select this section and click Align, Edit Last Registration. I will reuse the original channels of the registration. And now we have the Big Warp interface, which is opening which means that I will be allowed to edit all the landmarks that were used to do the spline transformation. I can ignore the window on the left, so usually I just minimize it. I move away this window that I will need to click after the correction has been performed, and I'm expanding the size of the big warp fixed image. I can now zoom in on the region which was not well registered. And you see that there are a few landmarks which are purple here. I can make them bigger by going to the big warp options. And I can now, by pressing space, enter the landmark mode where I will be able to edit the landmark position. So here, if I'm over the landmark, I can press the left click, the, I can press the left mouse button and move the landmark. And I can do this for a few other landmarks. It's even possible to add other landmarks. So for instance here, I will move this one and to stretch this region, I will maintain control, press 
left click on the mouse button and then I have a new landmark which is pinned so meaning it's positioned on both the moving and the fixed image and now I can drag it and just extend to a new place this landmark. Once I am satisfied, I just need to press OK and I will re-export the registered section to QPath. I can go now back to QPath. I will zoom in on this region, delete all objects that were previously imported and import them back. You can now see that the regions are much better in here and here. And this allows you basically to spend some time and to re-edit the transformation manually when the automated workflow is not satisfactory enough. This can be a lot of work, uh, so maybe sometimes it's not always necessary, but if you're really interested in some regions and you want this to be very precise, then it's doable to edit uh, the result of the automated workflow. This video stops here. Be aware that this is just the starting point for doing other cool stuff, such as 3D reconstructions or data analysis with Python tools. So if you want to go further, please check the full documentation, which is accessible at go.epfl.ch slash ABBA. And if you have issues or questions or need help, please use the forum image.sc and put the ABBA tag in your questions. Thank you and goodbye.